Hi everyone, it's Carla with Carla K Art. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I'm gonna to be doing another Dutch pour in neutral metallics. Um, for the most part, my combination for Dutch pour just includes acrylic paint and Floetrol in some water. One of the things I can tell you is I like to add more water to the paints that I'm using on top of the base coat. I like the paints on top to be a little thinner. I find that they spread and create cells a little bit better when they're thinner. The base coat um, is probably about 60-40 or 70-30. Um, Floetrol being the larger number. The paint conditioner Floetrol. Um, and I have seen some YouTube videos of people that have done Dutch pours just with paint and water. But um, I do like the way the Floetrol extends the paint. I think that that works really nice. One of the things that I, I do recommend to people that are new to doing this Dutch pouring, I'm relatively new myself. I've been doing it for a few months, that's it. Um, but one of the things I have learned is it's better to um, have your paint sit overnight mixed up. Um, it just allows all the chemicals, um, all the ingredients of the paint and the flow troll um, to all blend a little bit better. And this type of a scraper, you're welcome to use whatever device you find works for you. And some people actually just use their fingers. I've actually got a bit of a... piece of dried paint or something right there. Or, yeah, it's right there. I might need to get a new strainer. I do strain the paint. I actually strain the Floetrol that I'm adding to the paint. I've never had a problem with the paint itself. But I have had issues where the Floetrol has dried a little bit in the container. It kind of creates a, a skin, a plastic skin, if you will. And that um, skin hardens and it will not flow with the air across your piece successfully. So you don't want to have any of those if you're trying to make your, especially if you're trying to make your surface really smooth. Um, in my case, the goal is not always to make the, I don't care if there's bumps in the surface. Um, I just don't want bumps to be from, I just don't want bumps to be from the paint because I think that would make it dry um, suspiciously so that even when you went, when you got it all, when you thought it was all dry, if you went, when you, when you go to put resin on it and stuff, it might not be the way you want it to be. So here I go. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit and kind of do its own thing here. Now, if you have an existing painting that you don't like and you want to go over the top of it, you can just cover it with the white um, base coat. It's probably better if you actually go over the painting with something like um, kills or something to kind of kill the colors underneath and to make it stick a little bit better. Um, because this has Floetrol in it, it is a little bit fluid. And when you, um, I'm trying to figure out what to do with this because it's got paint on all sides. Um, the fluidness in it makes it not such a good base cover um, if there's colors underneath it. And while this um, type of art form might look easy, not every piece comes out in such a way that you might find um, a good design for hanging on the wall. Um, so with that in mind, sometimes you end up reusing a canvas. So now that I've got this on there, I'm gonna go over it with the heat gun, and this is to pop any bubbles that are in it. I did see a couple of bubbles down here. I don't usually have a problem with bubbles myself, um, but I wanna make sure that I don't have any since I saw some down here. My heat gun is a bit temperamental because I've used it for when I put resin down over the top of the pieces, and so there's some resin on the stop and go handle and so it's a little sticky okay so there you have that um 
In doing these pieces, I have found myself, I just like to do one piece a day because it's a fairly relatively messy artwork. And unless you have the means with which to go through several gloves and lots of patience, um, just doing one a day kind of works for me. Okay. Certainly not the only way, just sharing my little anecdotes, if you will, here about what I do and do not like about the outcomes of these Dutch pours. So here's some black, and this is actually Liquitex Mars Black. Um, my go-to acrylic paint for painting is Liquitex. It's not the only good paint out there, it's just my go-to paint. And I tend to go dark to light on these things, except that after I do a trial and error with um, some new colors, I might find some colors that I want to sink down. And in this case, um, these are Artesia um, colors. Um, they're actually fabric paints. They're metallic fabric paints. And the gold, I like to bury it a little bit or have it combined with the browns, the light gold, um, because the tint that comes out of it can look a little bit brassy and not in a good way for my color combination. So I like to bury it a little bit. I like it when it mixes with the brown. I think that it makes it a little bit deeper, more towards the Aztec gold. And I'm gonna do the Aztec gold next so you can see it. The Aztec gold is darker. I mean, it definitely has a different color than that lighter gold, but um, the lighter gold really does. I'm gonna go right off the end there because it went off the end down here. So there's all the colors. And I just mix the colors up in um, coffee cups. Oh, and then silver. And um, I like to add silver to these um, otherwise warm colors. Um, I just think that it kind of adds a neat um, little extra touch to it um, that kind of balances it out and makes it look not so, um, again, I'll use that word brassy. Um, next, I'm going to use the hairdryer. Now, you can put the paint on there any direction you want. Um, obviously, you're going to be blowing paint, so you want to leave spaces where you can blow paint. I tend to go right up the center. Um, that works for me. So, I You can see how sometimes I follow it all the way up and sometimes I stop. It kind of depends on what I want to have going on, um, whether I want to bring it all the way out to the edge or if I want it to focus in the center. Um, I really like what's happening here. This got to be a little bit of a blur um, from the standpoint of the white on the outside edges, but I do like what happened with the cell design, with the little circles design. So I'm thinking um, instead of really pulling any of it off, I might just go over the top here a little bit. This has so much dynamic out, and this is all just plain, that I'm going to go in here a little bit. And create some dynamic. So looking at both the 
space that the paint takes up and the space that the outside white area takes up, um, which is referred to as the positive space where the paint is and the negative space where the white is, kind of balancing that out and trying to make it be a little more even all the way up the piece. Now, I've got a lot of pointy parts in here from the white where the white and the, the paint have mixed, and these are definitely rounded edges. So I'm gonna go in with some low heat. Oh, looks like I have to be a little higher. And try and make them a little more pointy. There we go. So that took away that rounded edge and kind of made them a little more rigid. The next thing that I have to work with is gravity. I kind of wish I had a little more. This black I'm realizing is really strong up to here and then it stops. So let's see what happens if I add a little black, maybe a little black there. Sometimes you can pour it on and just leave it. And that in itself is enough to kind of balance it out. But I like the way that other paints have blended in with this. So I'm gonna go at it with low first. A little higher. Yeah, I like what it did there, but now of course it's got really big on me. <sighs> and here we go back and forth. You gotta be careful, it's kinda like cutting your bangs. You can end up ruining the whole project in your attempts to um, cure things. And the thinner the paint is here, the thinner the line will be. And my black was a little bit thick, which caused it to get so wide in my quote unquote repair here. I'm gonna put a dash of silver and I actually may just leave it. Um, the style is a little bit different than this end, but not so much that it, um, Looks horribly bad. Try and remember to put my paint in the plastic container. The plastic container is to keep my hair dryer from blowing the paints over. I don't really want to add any white to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and blow it a little bit. See what happens. forget which one is the heat button and which one is the on and off button. I like what's happened here. I actually like the little island out here. Um, this little brown piece surrounded by the white. Um, I really like the flow. I think the color is terrific. I love the color. A um, little bit brassy in here like I was talking about. That's, that's a little bit of an area I'd prefer not look like that. So now I'm going to go in with the creme de brulee, the little teeny blowtorch, and see what I can do. And sometimes this will cure that because it'll bring the black up. Yep. This creme de brulee though, as you go over areas that are black, they can make the black area show the white paint underneath and sometimes that makes the power of the black disappear because it kind of becomes a gray. So if you have an area that's black and you really like it, proceed cautiously with one of these burners because like right there, it took that darkness away and made it light. You may or may not want to use the burner on it. Having said that, I love the texture I get from the burner. You don't want to keep the burner in any one place too long. Um, it can um, burn the paint, make it dry funny. I 
I kind of got it too light up here, so I was kind of trying to balance it out down here. Overall, this piece is really splendid. It's really nice. Really like it. Okay. So, um, at this point, I'm going to leave it. Um, I have to transport it to some place where it's level to dry. It's not incredibly level right here. It's not majorly different, but it is a little bit slanted um, in part to help you see the picture when I'm doing it. And in part because the floor of my um, building here, this is a garage, a, a barn, a converted barn. So um, the floor is tilted so that the water doesn't accumulate inside this area and because of that I cannot get any of my tables level so it's um, I do have a spot over on this section over there that is level and so I just take my pieces over there to dry plus um, because I am in a barn it's not um, the same temperature all the time I do have a wood burning stove that goes that I, that I use to kind of warm it up in here but the the temperature does fluctuate a bit so it takes a little bit longer to dry um, so I'm going to take the camera off and come around and take some flat pictures so I can insert them into this video so you can see what this final piece looks like from above. And um, then I will move the piece over there. So if you like this video, press the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe. It's free to subscribe. It just allows you to see notifications about when I put out new videos. And if you want to find out more about me and my business, you can go to the down arrow or the three hamburger bar menu, three dots things, depending on what device you're looking at this video on and um, there's links to my website and to my sales sites and some extra information about me. So until later, I will be in the art studio. Hope you're having a great day. Bye. Hey everyone, this is Carla with Carla K Art doing a close-up of this one Dutch pour I just finished and put on YouTube. You can see where I was working to balance out the white areas, which is the negative space um, on both sides of the piece so that when it hangs on the wall, it's visually appealing and interesting to the viewer. The colors here are just absolutely gorgeous and I got lots of cell action, the white circles which create a texture in the piece that I don't know if photographs can ever really do justice to. Because the paint is wet, it's shiny. Of course, I'll wait until the paint dries, and then of course it will get dull. And then I'll put resin on the top, and the resin will create kind of like a glass-like sheen, and um, kind of like looking through a layer of glass, because it'll, be, it'll have a thickness, um, possibly up to a quarter of an inch thick, depending on how the resin goes on. But this piece just came out beautiful. And you can see where the paint wraps over all the way to the edges so that when you hang this on the wall you don't need to put a picture frame on it the the edges will all just look absolutely beautiful hope you're having a great day out there bye everyone